today i like to talk on uh, development of uh, concentration and buddha said the chatasso ima bhikkave samadhi bhavana there are four kinds of development of concentration what for there is a development of concentration that leads to dwelling happily in this very life concentration that leads to living happily in this life second there is a development of concentration that leads to attaining knowledge and vision that is jnana dasan for the attainment of jnana dasan knowledge and vision there is a development of concentration that leads to mindfulness and clear comprehension samadhi bhavana bhavana sati sampajnaya sati sampajnaya sati and clear of mindfulness and clear comprehension both there is a development of concentration that lead to the destruction of defilements or destruction of taints these are the four kind of concentration one is to experience to live happily in this very life second is to gain a knowledge and vision third is to develop developing mindfulness and clear comprehension fourth is concentration leads to destruction of defilements destruction of taints four kind of concentration now let us take it in turn and try to understand what these four kinds of concentration sometimes when you hear concentration it is just to gain one pointedness of mind and beyond that uh, people don't know very much and don't try to understand anything further uh, more so therefore this uh, discourse of the buddha is ex- absolutely necessary very important very important and what because is the development of concentration that leads to the dwelling happily in this life this is what many people know and have heard that is he <coughs> he addresses bikus he addresses bikus someone secluded from sense pleasures secluded from unwholesome state of mind one abiku or bikune enters and dwells in the first jhana which consists of rapture and pleasure born of seclusion this is the first attainment first jhana and we have to understand the qualification and qualities of the first jhana qualification is to be secluded there are uh, three kind of seclusion one is kaya viveka second is chitta viveka third is upadhi viveka seclusion physical seclusion mental seclusion and seclusion from clinging greed desire physical seclusion means that one 
takes time off from the hustle bustle busy activities and find a quiet place that is physical seclusion and then the person overcomes hindrances greed anger sleepiness and drowsiness restlessness and worry and doubt these five one these are called secluded from uh secluded from unknown states of mind essential pleasures secluded from sensual pleasures with with the experiencing enjoying sensual pleasures you cannot have seclusion so that is first thing that seclusion is the seclusion from he may but the mention sensual pleasures means uh, kama chanda desire he means on sensual pleasures means uh, greed greed uh, craving lust and so forth temporarily separate from that then unwholesome mental states include uh, anger sleepiness and drowsiness restlessness and worry and doubt these four particularly are meant meant by the word unwholesome mental states unwholesome mental state so so one secluded from that and then this is called physical seclusion mental seclusion overcoming these five hindrances is mental seclusion and then the person focus the mind on an object like breathing and gain uh one pointedness of mind and this is the first other qualification now the person attains gain the first attainment what is called absorption or concentration once he gain that concentration it has qualities what are the qualities it has rapture and pleasure this rapture and pleasure is born of seclusion this rapture and pleasure is born from seclusion now this is not very deep concentration but a kind of concentration that you can say take a deep breath and say i just finally got rid of these things and then tell me as pleasure and rapture and then he has uh, also thought and examination thought here means uh, thought of uh, living friendliness because he or uh, he has overcome hatred anger then replaced it with living friendliness metta that is the one that is one of the thoughts and then he let go of his greed that is another thought called uh, generosity letting go uh, of uh, greed temporarily then 
he has a thought of compassion, compassion, karuna. Now these three thoughts we find in the Noble Eightfold Path. In, in, in Samma Sankappa, right thought, right thought is thought of letting go, thought of loving friendliness, thought of compassion. These are called right thoughts. Now we are talking about the right concentration. Only when you have right concentration, you can be happy here and now. Enjoy pleasure. Enjoy uh, happiness in this very life. Even if you don't think of the next life, rebirth, but in this very life, you get this benefit by practicing this. So these are, the, these are thoughts. That's called thoughts, consist of thoughts. And <clears throat> examination. In Pali, it's called vichar, vichar, examination. Examination means that the person, after attaining this state, he maintained this state with a very, very clear understanding. So these are the qualities and qualification of the first attainment. This is, once you attain that state, uh, it is, uh, it is relatively peaceful and happy in this life. And then, when they attain that state, he would be very diligent and repeat this again and again and again until he masters that attainment. When he masters that attainment, his mind sees there is something higher than that. There is something higher than that. Then he strives again. Again he uses his own subject of meditation. And then he finds these beautiful thoughts of letting go, loving friendliness, compassion and so forth are no longer useful but they are they have been useful before. Now they become little uh, obstruction or obstacle for their further gaining happiness and concentration. And then he let them go. When he let them go, he then he experienced in a deep quietness calmness and peaceful mental state. And then he gained without thought, without examination, he gains happiness and concentration. This concentration is born from knowing that these thoughts are gone. Unification of mind consists of rapture and pleasure born of concentration. Now this time he has concentration even better than before or higher than before and then that concentration brings him more joy and happiness without thoughts and examination. Then, if develop that, master it, and gradually he find even the rapture and 
pleasure uh, is somewhat uh, making the mind a little unsteady and the, uh, let that go and they develop equanimity and mindfulness. This happened gradually. His mindfulness and uh, equanimity develops, and then he stays in that state and clearly comprehending. He and he then he experiences pleasure with the body, bodily pleasure. It pervades all his body, and then. And this is also highly praised by the noble ones. When he attains the second jhana, thought and examinations are gone. That is where uh, you can have a real noble silence. When people go to meditation centers, they hear, they ask people to practice noble silence. You cannot have noble silence until you attain the second concentration or second jhana, where your thought and examination will fade away. They are no longer there. Only then your mind becomes calm, peaceful, and only then you can have noble silence, and so forth. And then uh, third jhana. Then after that, he masters the third jhana, as I mentioned again. Then he comes, his mind becomes even sharper, deeper, more concentration. And then he let go of pleasure and pain. Even the pleasure and pain uh, becomes gross in his mind. Before they were subtle and peaceful, now pleasure and pain are gross. So he let them go and uh, overcome all his pain and this disappointment. All these are disappeared. Then he has, he enters the state called fourth jhana, where both equanimity and mindfulness are pure, cleanness. When he attained that state called fourth jhana, the person, whenever the person wants to attain these four stages, because he mastered them, and then he can attain them again and again. That way the person lives happily and uh, uh, in this very life. The person can live happily in this very life. He may not have attained it, attained enlightenment. Uh, his attainment is not uh, perfect, but the person can stay in that state whenever the person wants. That is called the attainment jhana or concentration uh, that uh, makes the person happy in this very life. That is one. Second, this is one function of concentration. This is the most popular one, the one more people talk about, and many people know about it. Now the second is development of concentration uh, that helps the person to gain knowledge and vision. What is the knowledge and vision? This is uh, this is called 
developing divine I, divine I, that is surpassing human I. And how that, how a person develops it, he attains to the perception of light, very bright light. He attains, he deliberately aroused very bright light in his mind. This is mental state, aroused very bright light. And focuses on perception of day light and focus the mind on the perception of day light. That means he perceived day light, bright light without cloud. The sky is blue. The mind becomes very sharp and he perceived that light. And he sees the days, he sees the days very brightly. And he continues this <coughs> uh, even at night, even at night. So for him, day and night are the same. There's no difference between day and night. There is no darkness in his mind. As he means uh, uh, night, day and night the same. Then, with the mind that is open and uncovered, open and uncovered, uncovered or removed the darkness, the mind is completely open and uh, enjoy luminosity, brightness. And that way, in his mind, he can see objects, not only close to him, but in distance. And that is the second uh, development of concentration, second purpose of developing concentration. Okay. Third is, the second is developing knowledge and vision. Vision through vision, he gained this knowledge to see and sees uh, numerous objects which normally in your normal, ordinary eyes cannot see. This is a very special attainment, the superhuman attainment. And the third development of concentration leads to mindfulness and clear comprehension. That is what normally we develop, mindfulness and clear comprehension. How one does it? A bhikkhu knows feelings as they arise, as they remain present, and as they disappear. Feelings, very simple sees how feeling arises, how long feeling remains, how it disappears. Pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling or neutral feeling, when it arises, the person knows it arising and it is fully clear and comprehend comprehending its persistence, how duration, how long it remains. So the mind has to be very sharp. 
you develop concentration. With that concentration, you see, concentration, you see that clearly comprehending the arising of feeling, duration of feeling, and passing away. As they, as they, as they arise, as they remain present, and as they disappear. And he knows and perceives as they arise and pass away the, the, the feeling and uh, perceptions. Perceptions are through the eye, we call sanya, through the see through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, we perceive things. Rupa sanya, sadha sanya, gandha sanya, rasa sanya, pottapa sanya, dhamma sanya, so forth. The perception of form, perception of feeling, perception of thought, perception of consciousness, perception of mind object. The person can perceive them as they arise, as they persist, and as they pass away. With this clear, concentrated mind. And the third is, he knows thoughts. Chetana, thoughts arising, remaining, and passing away. Uh, thoughts as they arise, as they remain present, and as they disappear. Three stages. So, only three things. Feeling, Perceptions and thoughts. These are very subtle mental states. The person sees feeling as they arise. Here the word used they, they means all kind of feeling. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral and so forth. Uh, there are various kind of feelings, 108 kind of feelings. I don't have I don't have time to explain all these things in details. And then this feeling as they arise, as they stay in the mind, as they pass away. And this way, what does he do? He practices mindfulness and clear comprehension. This is the third function of concentration. This is the development of concentration that leads to mindfulness and clear comprehension. And the fourth function, would ask the question, what is the development of concentration that leads to the destruction of taints? Ah, that is the most important. The fourth function is the destruction of defilements, destroying all the taints. Asava. In Pali, they are called asava. Uh, asavarnankaya. We always say asavarnankaya, chetovimiti panyamiti dittevdami abhinya sachikarta upyampajuveriti and so forth. We hear them in Pali, over, having overcome all the taints, the person lives without any taint, any greed, any hatred, and then any division. How can he do it? A bit good rest, contemplating, arising, and vanishing of the five aggregates subject to clinging. Now, arising and passing away, 
the five aggregates of clinging. Five aggregates subject to clinging. What are the five aggregates? Form, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness. They are constantly, continuously, without any exception, are changing all the time. In a minutest level, subatomic level, our body is made up of atoms, molecules, atomic particles, entire body. They always are in a state of flux, changing, 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 never stop. So, uh, contemplating arising and vanishing of the fire aggregates, such as such is form, it is made up of four elements. Elements are always changing. Internal elements and external elements all are changing all the time. Such is origin of form, such is <coughs> passing away form. So he knows the form, origin of form, and passing away of form. I said form are made up of four elements. What is the origin of forms? Rupas, Ahara Samudaya, Rupa Samudaya. When we bring food into, the, into our body, they renew our cells. They renew our cells. That is how they maintain, they remain. We understand this very clearly. And when we are deprived of food, the form will be depleted and cannot exist anymore. There are four kinds of food. Kabalinkara, Rapasar, Mano Sanchetana, Rinyar. I have no time to explain all this in detail, but I simply say, Ahara means food means physical food, one, and three, mental food. When we consume them, when this food are functioning, increasing, adding, the form exists. When we remove them, the form does not exist. So, such is form. Such is the origin of form, and such is the passing away of form. Similarly, such is the feeling, origin of feeling, and passing away of feeling. Such is the perception, origin of perception, and passing away of perception. Such is the thought, origin of thought, and passing away of thought. Such is consciousness, origin of consciousness, and passing away of consciousness. I think this, uh, this is, suppose the Buddha said, this development of concentration that leads to the destruction of things. Now, when we gain concentration, I mentioned in many times, concentration is not like making you like a vegetable, a rock. It is the most subtle way of the mind working. And in that deeply concentrated mind can see things as they really are. Buddha mentioned it thousands of times in his discourse. Samahitam chittam yata bhutam pajanati. Concentrated mind sees things as they really are. These are the four stages that concentrated mind can do. One is living happily in this life. Second is developing knowledge and vision. Third is developing mindfulness. Fourth function is the destruction of defilement. Third, all our defilements 
arise from our five aggregates. We cling to the body. All our suffering are in the five aggregates. That is why the Buddha says, Sankitena Pajyapada Nakanda Dukkha. In short, all five aggregates are suffering. In order to overcome, destroy, get rid of suffering, we must know the five aggregates exactly as they are. When you gain true concentration, deep concentration, right concentration, that is what we can do. With that concentration, we can see the body feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness changing constantly, continuously, every molecule, every atom, everything in this body are changing. So, then what happened? Then how can we get rid of our taints, defilement? Because we see everything is impermanent. How can we cling to anything that is impermanent? How can we develop uh, hatred and uh, jealousy, fear and so forth? from this impermanent body feeling and perception and so forth. And therefore, this is the way to destroy defilement. So this is the fourth function of concentration. Let me repeat the four functions of concentration if you have not remembered now. One is to live happily here. Second is to develop in the vision and knowledge. Third is to practice mindfulness very clearly and clear comprehension. Fourth is to destroy defilements and finish our sansaric existence. So that is our Samma Samadhi, Noble Eightfold Path, destroy defilements. And that is how I repeatedly mentioned Noble Eightfold Path is the Kama that destroys Kama. Noble Eightfold Path destroys Kama. Kama destroying Kama. Kama Khe Kama, Buddha said. Kama Khe Kama. Kama destroying Kama. As long as we have Kama, we repeat this cycle of birth and death, birth and death, death, death and so forth. So, I think, friends, this Dhamma that we learn is absolutely necessary for us to understand what we are really doing. I think, friends, this may be enough for today's Dhamma talk. And now I go to our meditation. We spend some time in meditation. Okay. <clears throat> now, Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unattracted, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or in awake, one should develop this mindfulness 
This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this, <coughs> friends, we start our meditation. We have very short time to meditate because I took a little longer time for my Dhamma talk. And now let us sit in a very comfortable position. If you are sitting on chairs, put your feet down, don't cross your feet. Put your feet on the floor and keep the body straight and breathe deeply and breathe out deeply until all your air in your lungs is gone. Next time you breathe in, you can get lung full of air. That means you get more oxygen. That charge your red blood cells, which go to the heart. Heart pumps and then all the oxygen goes through the entire body, through arteries, capillaries, and so on, and charge every cell in the body. This is happening all the time. Even if you do not see them mentally, you can understand this is how we are changing all the time. Changing. And then you see every feeling you experience is changing. Every perception is changing. Every thought is changing. Every moment of consciousness is changing and you are changing all the time, which means everything is impermanent. You can see everything is permanently impermanent. So, friends, you do this meditation, I stop talking. <coughs>
By the use of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fierce crook be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be from the highest realm of existence to the lowest. May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <clears throat> now, friends, <laughs> we want to end this session. May all those who are in hospitals taken care of by very com compassionate doctors, nurses, hospital staffs, may they recover soon and return to normal life, practice Dhamma meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric dukkha, suffering, sickness. May all the doctors, nurses, hospital staffs who are taking care of these people out of compassion, sacrificing their life, risking their own life. May they also find peace, happiness, and liberate from samsaric suffering. May those who have lost their loved ones any part of the world, may they recover from their grief, and find time to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in various troubled spots, war zones, discriminations, various type of places, and all those who are in all 10 directions North, Northeast, East, Southeast, South, Southwest, West, Northwest, up and down. All these ten directions, whoever, whatever living beings there may be, without any exception, be released from samsaric suffering and attain liberation. With this, friends, I have to end this session. There are many people waiting in the dining hall for me to go. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, 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 bhante. Sadhu, 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 bhante. Sadhu, 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 bhante. Sadhu, 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 bhante. Sadhu,